changing the topic a little bit here, um, but I'm, I guess I'm interested in um, is kind of, uh, well, more, more about yourself, right? So uh, you said at the beginning that you were, you were working um, in Bitcoin, not working, you were interested in Bitcoin, sorry, whilst you're working in investments, uh, institutional investments. Like what, um, how did your story with Marathon go? Because was it a situation where you kind of poached from or, or how did that how did that go like how, how did you get into bitcoin i guess like how did you get into bitcoin first and then how did it the situation go with you dory around that yeah um well i don't have as cool of a story as peter mccormick you know who was buying using bitcoin to buy cocaine on the internet so um <laughs> it's not going to be as fun or colorful as something like that but i do have a little bit of an unconventional background um at least by traditional means not by bitcoin standards by any means but um so I studied economics in college. And so I've got sort of that background, if you would, although questionable what the value of a collegiate economics degree really is. Um, but I, when I got out of school, I wanted to be an actor. And I, like, I've done acting kind of my whole life, it's something I'm still very passionate about. It's all just about being a better human. It's kind of the way I like it. How do you listen? How do you build relationships? And so when I got out of school, I moved to New York. I did the starving artist thing um, for about two years. People tell you being Starving artist is shitty. Turns out that's correct. It took me two years to figure out that lesson. Um, I was a CrossFit coach and an athletic trainer as my day job. So I was kind of in the strength and conditioning world, if you would, um, or, you know, chugging the CrossFit Kool-Aid, evangelizing that before I was evangelizing Bitcoin. Um, after a couple of years, I, I was going through a transition. I wanted to do something that was a little more intellectually stimulating. Uh, was kind of frustrated with the artist route and watching people air squat. It's only so fascinating to me. So um, I was looking to go back more to kind of like my, my econ roots, if you would. And I got introduced to Bitcoin by a friend of mine in 2016, uh, who was investing in it, trading in it with friends. And in hindsight, it was actually fortunate that I was kind of in between careers or jobs, if you would, because I had just a ton of free time to study. Um, I'm not technical, so the learning curve for me was pretty steep, uh, especially, you know, kind of earlier days where just a lot of digesting Andreas Antonopoulos and trying to understand what was going on, but loved Bitcoin's like uh, sort of philosophical leanings and sort of economic leanings more so than I did the technical side of it and really just kind of fell in love with it. So studied it kind of independently for a year-ish wanted to work in the space, but I had no, you know, tangible skills or business skills, if you would. All of my skills were intangible at the time. So did a little bit of like consulting for a smart contract startup, but just couldn't quite get my foot in the door somewhere. And then I ended up just getting lucky and getting a job in investor relations um, uh, through a friend of mine and knew absolutely nothing about it. Um, full disclosure, I like Googled capital markets before my interview. Um, you know, like very green. Right. Um, but I just kind of put my head down. I cut my teeth there for about, I think I was there for a little over three years, three and a half years or so. And, um, I was like the Bitcoin guy in the office. Uh, when I got hired, the president of the company asked everyone to give him like an investment thesis pitch. And I was pitching Bitcoin and, um, wasn't very well received. Um, probably would have been a good investment at the time. This was 2018. Um, but, uh, essentially as once we kind of got to a point where real sort of Bitcoin companies started, uh, appearing in public markets and like looking for investor relations help, they basically started getting fed to me. Cause I was like the Bitcoin guy. So I actually did the first company I worked with really that was serious was riot blockchain actually. So I kind of helped with their IR efforts, uh, at the start of 2020 and then when that relationship phased out, Marathon came on board as a client and at the time was like a $7 million market cap company, um, had three employees, maybe owned 2000 machines. I don't even think they'd placed their first 10,000 unit order yet at the time. Um, and along with, uh, they had another outside IR resource at the time named Jason Assad. He and I kind of like tag team the IR efforts and so got to be involved basically, you know, on the whole building process of the business. Um, when they were, I think they raised about $500 million in capital um, through ATMs mostly at the end of 2020 and simultaneously were buying machines and Bitcoin's price was going up and stock price was going up. Um, 
And so I got to be involved in that whole process. I wanted to do something in Bitcoin full time. The industry started to feel like it got to a point where like there were more opportunities. And I started to, so I was looking for something. I started to kind of carve a little niche for myself as like the crypto IR guy. I did it. I had a couple other companies I worked with. I was going to do a, like a crypto event um, for institutional investors, which now there's tons of those. There were none at the time. Um, and I think uh, Fred and I just had it. Once Fred became CEO, he and I had a conversation. He uh, basically asked if I wanted to come join full time. And I said, hell yeah. And so I uh, jumped in and that's where I sit today. So. You guys mentioned you're in Texas and also Montana. Is there any other regions within the United States that you're uh, looking towards? And then also, what about outside the U.S.? Yeah, so we're looking. At, uh, so we have a couple, some legacy miners that I mentioned, like that 2000 or so with Compute North. Those are in uh, South Dakota and Nebraska. Uh, so they've got facilities there. Most of the operating machines today are in Hardin, Montana. Uh, most are going to be deployed in Texas, though, a couple of different locations at these power stations. Um, we are looking at other states. What's kind of interesting where we look is renewable power. So for us, that's people define that differently, but solar, wind, hydro, we actually throw nuclear into that mix as well. We're not really doing a ton of nuclear today, but um, we think that's a, a perfect pairing for Bitcoin mining because you can scale up a nuclear facility with zero marginal cost, right? There's a lot today in the US that sit at like 50, like that sit well below capacity. Um, the uh, but then it's got to be a friendly regulatory environment, and the cost has to be low enough. So you know that that uh, states that have been more vocally anti Bitcoin mining or questioning of it, maybe not where we're going to go today. Places we've looked, um, but not today. Uh, we are very interested in doing stuff outside the U.S. Though today, 100% of the operations are within the U.S. We do think it might be. We're starting to think about that mostly from a strategic perspective. Um, you know, there's just, again, the U S is great mostly because of regulation and because of the excess power that exists here in the United States. But, um, you know, we are believers that Bitcoin's hash rate should be decentralized and you don't want too much concentration of risk within the network. Um, you know, we ourselves are, are not going to like make that change, but just philosophically, we like to think that way. So, uh, yeah, we look at other places. It's kind of, it's interesting right now though, like, Scandinavia was a really interesting place, but Europe has shut down Bitcoin mining for the time being. Um, so you have to be a South America maybe as a place to go, but most places outside the US, the next biggest place today be after since Kazakhstan shut down is Russia. Um, questionable if we would go there. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I we, we do look at geographic diversity. It's important. Um, but today all the operations are US based. You think could be uh, listening to this podcast, man, and uh, you know it's going to give you a call, Charlie, uh, anytime. To see if yeah. you want to head over to Russia. You never know; could happen. <laughs> Always <laughs> open to having a conversation. I'll talk to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get on the phone to Russia. Uh, yeah, no, I think they've got uh, they've got a lot going on at the moment uh, with uh, Ukraine and stuff, uh, so they're probably a bit busy. Yeah. But uh, but um, no, I, I guess uh, I've I've got one last question I wanted to ask you, which was, um, sure. do you? Do you see any situation in the future? Because obviously you guys are, are mining Bitcoin. Um, do you see any situation in the future where you guys would diversify into mining various different altcoins or even saying nodes and, and stuff like that um, in order to, to, to make money, basically? Is that something you see yourselves going or do you think that you guys in your short, short, long -term, short and long-term plans have got it set so that essentially Bitcoin is where you're focused. Sorry, That's a good question. question yeah, we've, um, we've, you're right. So we're, we're just Bitcoin today, hundred percent, you know, um, and we, we hold all the Bitcoin we mine. Um, so we're kind of very simple from like, as an investment thesis from that perspective, like we're a proxy for Bitcoin is how a lot of institutions look at us, um, which I do think people like. That being said, we have explored the idea and we're, we're actually revisiting it and continuing to look at this is, does it make sense to take a portion of our operations and mine altcoins um, and then basically sell those and use the profits to pay for our operating expenses? Um, so that's something we're looking at. I think it's unlikely you would see us mine altcoins and hold them the way we do our Bitcoin, um, but could we... Are there, are there strategies that we could use to basically help cover like ongoing costs of running the business? Uh, that's something that we're looking at. 
Um, I don't know how realistic it is, like in terms of that being part of our like actual future plans. Like, I don't know how the probability of that actually being implemented, but it's something that we have looked at before and are continuing to look at. So I would say that's probably the only capacity you would see us start playing in the altcoin space, if you would. What's maybe more likely for us is if you think about the idea that we're soon going to be in a place where we're earning a very large amount of Bitcoin on a daily basis. And if we're not selling it, we're kind of becoming like a large asset manager almost, right? We're just sitting on this pool of capital. Um, so then the question is, what do you do with it? Um, and I think you may see us start implementing strategies of like, we're, we're actually, we've already been experimenting with this, but like, can we generate yield off of our Bitcoin holdings and use that to cover operating expenses? Um, that's something we're experimenting with today. Uh, would it make sense for us to start? People always ask me like, what's the long-term plan for Marathon, right? Like in 10 years, where's this company going to be? Um, if we become a large holder of Bitcoin, we're not just a proxy for investors to invest in Bitcoin, but then we also have opportunities to actually invest in the Bitcoin ecosystem as well. Um, so basically leveraging that Bitcoin or that pool of capital as a way to kind of look at um, develop, you know, investing in startups or experimenting with other businesses that are either directly tied to Bitcoin mining um, or that are kind of doing work within the Bitcoin ecosystem. Because if we can help build out the Bitcoin ecosystem, that's good for us, right? And we think that's good for our mission as well. So I think you might see more initiatives in that side, but the altcoin thing is an interesting question, something that we have uh, we have explored. So what about you, Charlie? Um, besides Bitcoin, do you have any other interests in crypto? NFTs, Metaverse, uh, meme coins. <laughs> yeah, you know, I do. Unfortunately, I, I got so much just trying to stay on top of Bitcoin. I don't have as much time as I'd like to research everything else. Uh, Bitcoin moves fast enough for me personally, but um, I, I really like the premise of the NFT space. And I like, so if I go, if I think about like, when, like when I first got into Bitcoin, um, and like the, the use of blockchain technology, like what's a blockchain for? Like, why do people have, like, why should that exist? Why do people use them? Um, makes a lot of sense for me for, uh, non-centrally controlled money for distributed and immutable money. Um, the next best thing for me is it's data that doesn't exist in the real world, I think is probably where there are lots of interesting use cases. I think NFTs are an example of that, right? What is, NFTs essentially do is they take something that's digital and they create scarcity around it. So something where there was no scarcity, all of a sudden scarcity exists. And if you can create scarcity, then you have, then there's value there, right? There's monetary value to something that's scarce. There's no monetary value to something that has no scarcity. Um, so I actually think that's a really interesting use case. I've always thought that um, identity, um, people talk about health records as one example, but like your credentials, like who you are, like that, that should totally live on, a blockchain in my head. Um, and I, I always think about this example when there's ex like, if I kind of, if I try to put my shoes and, or if I try to put myself in the shoes of someone who's like a refugee. So think about like Afghanistan, right? What happened there recently? You had all these people whose country just fell apart and the, those who are lucky enough to get out, like how in the hell do you prove who you are, right? Like, how do you prove that you, you know, that you have credentials that people can trust you that, you know, that how, like, how do you rebuild your life? Right. Very difficult to do if you don't have your identity with you. Um, and if your country fell apart, your identity essentially fell apart. Right. Um, so I've always thought like stuff like that should, that has value, but isn't tangible, like doesn't exist in the real world. I've always thought those are like the next best use cases for blockchains. Um, so really interested in that. Um, I was at a conference recently with Fred that was mostly geared towards uh, DeFi and loved every talk I heard. Unfortunately, I just don't have time to like research it as closely as I would like. So, um, but you know, it's like, it's a really exciting space, right? There's so much that's changing and so much that's moving. Um, and that's one of the fun parts of being in it, right? One of the reasons I wanted to be in it for so long. It's like the coolest, it's the coolest industry to be part of, right? I think I do a small, I've got a small role, right? Bitcoin mining is very specific, but I think as a whole, it's a really, really cool space to be in. I have one last question. Uh, you did mention that you had a discussion with Fred 
And he said that um, you project and you actually predict that in the future, power companies will start you know, owning mining businesses. Is this something that you know, you've heard in some rumor or chatter about somewhere? Or do you just think it's something that should naturally happen because the incentive is there? I feel strongly that it's going to happen. Part of that is incentive. Part of it is you're actually seeing that come to life today. So it's really, and it's amazing. I've, I have some friends who work in the power uh, world and some that I've pitched this to are saying like, great idea, they should do it, but they won't do it for like a decade um, because of like kind of how conservative they are. And they, you know, they sort of, they tend to move slowly and they tend to think in like decades, not months um, because, you know, they're, the amount of capital it requires to build a new power facility. Um, what's amazing to me is how quickly the mentality has shifted though. So a year and a half ago, um, and I know this anecdotally from friends who've worked in power companies, um, a year and a half ago, they would not touch it. Uh, I have a friend who used to work at a large power company. And I think for the better part of two years, he was pitching them on Bitcoin mining starting maybe in 2018 or 19. Um, they just shut them down. Um, now I know that same company, like we've had conversations with about how do they get into Bitcoin mining. Um, so every major, act, we've talked about this, every major or most of the large power companies in the United States have approached us and asked us how they can get into Bitcoin mining. And they, because they get it, right? They're sitting on these assets and especially in the renewable space, um, they're sitting on these assets that are not operating at 100% capacity. And if they can charge someone three cents per kilowatt hour on something that's currently wasted and generates no revenue, they would love to do that. What's interesting is long term, if they actually own the Bitcoin, right? If they own, if they were more vertically integrated than just like renting or selling the excess power, um, depending on where Bitcoin's price is, uh, but they'd be making somewhere between 30 and 40 cents per kilowatt hour on right now something that is zero, right? So the economic incentives are huge. And you're starting to see it. The announcement we've made by working directly with a large renewable power company is part of this process, I believe. Um, and actually there's one, there is a public company called Constellation. I think they were just spun out of Exelon not too long ago and they're kind of their own branch now, but they held an analyst day. And this is public, this is on their investor relations website. You can go check out the recording. They held an analyst day um, two weeks ago where they were asked about kind of how they're going to innovate, generate new revenue and kind of grow the business. And they directly talked about Bitcoin mining as part of that mission. So it's amazing that this industry that thinks in multi-decade timeframes typically, basically within a year has done a 180 on how they're looking at it. Um, so we think it's, yeah, I think it's on the horizon. I think you're going to see announcements this year um, from people talking about it. But you just have to bear in mind that like there's headline risk for them. There's also just regulatory complications. Like they can't be their own customers. So they can't, um, they can't own hundred percent of a Bitcoin mining facility. They would need to own portions of it basically. And that's just like in the weeds of the regulation. But um, they're, I think once they have comfort around it, I think you'll see more people start talking about it in a bigger way. No, it's interesting to see. And I think, oh, yeah, well, I believe you're right uh, that we're going to see this year uh, mining get picked up by uh, more energy companies. It just makes sense, doesn't it, really? You've got the further energy, use it, make, exactly. monetize it. Uh, it's just 100% uh, obvious. I guess I, I have one extremely fast question before we do head out. Um, I'm aware of time. Um, but I think people who've been listening to this podcast are going to be asking themselves, do you still do CrossFit? <laughs> You know, I love, that's a, that's a great question. It's the most important question you've asked me this whole time. Um, it is. Not really. I, uh, I, I got fairly beat up from like my semi-competitive days of doing it, training, you know, doing multiple sessions a day. Um, I would actually really like to get back into it. It's, it's very fun. Um, but it's, uh, it's not the way that I like, and I, it's served a great base for me. Um, all my training today is based around functional movement. Um, which, you know, CrossFit introduced, right? I'm not the guy who does like biceps for 20 minutes and then runs on a treadmill for 20 minutes and calls myself fit. Um, so I still, there's like, there's base layer education there that crosses over, but uh, technically no is the answer to your question. 
Gotcha. Okay. No, that's fair enough. I've got this image of you as like a Joe Rogan with the kettlebells, not doing all the functional stuff. Uh, uh, there, <laughs> there are there are kettlebells with there, Of course, yeah. though. And you've got the elk jerky <laughs> in the background as well, and the uh, <laughs> DMT. Yeah, like, no, uh, no, yeah, no squat rack. Though. I'm not, I'm not snatching and cleaning jerk in my apartment here. Gotcha. Okay. No, fair enough. Okay. No, I appreciate the uh, the insight there. But nice. No, um, it's been awesome to to chat to you, man. And um, so yeah, it's um interesting to see how uh how things differ in the money industry. Um, so I appreciate you coming on, man. Is there anything uh, final you wanted to say before we head out? Not necessarily. Other than I really appreciate you guys having me on. This has been a fun conversation. Um, I hope I didn't monologue too much and <laughs> take over too. It was. I felt like it was a little. It wasn't much of a dialogue, but um, yeah. Thank you guys for having me on. Anytime you have, you know, if I can help or help answer questions or whatnot like always happy to be a resource so um yeah no, you're really good perfect it's nice. thanks it's a we, we like to let the guests talk more much 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 more than we do because we're not exactly that interesting people to be realistically honest with you so uh you're the reason people are listening so that's all good um uh, but yeah I don't know about that, but thank you i appreciate it <laughs> i'll say take care and uh thank you for joining me thanks ricardo and jerry for joining us of course as well and thank you for everyone listening have uh, an amazing uh, day, week, year, month, uh, life. Uh, be happy and keep buying Bitcoin. Take care. Mm-hmm.